So, let's go over this game quickly. Um, maybe you watched my last uh, video. Um, it only lasted um, 21 moves. And I don't know, like 50 minutes, but I, but I analyzed it for 45 minutes. And I got a little carried away, so I will try to um, take uh, a little less time this uh, time and um, go a little um, faster over the moves. So this the opening was normal until this point. This is a strange move. We gotta look at the opening book, but I've, I'm pretty sure this isn't very good and I haven't faced it before. So I don't know if my response was good or not. I think it was good to take here. I could uh, um, hold on to this pawn for quite a long time. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to bring this bishop out. I'm not very sure. I think we should have played to e2 right away. But then again, um, we forced him to play h6 because he wanted to print, prevent um, an attack on f7, like in the fried liver attack. Yeah, here was the first time I was um, very close to plundering away my bishop. Oh, let's go to the analysis board right away. I gotta disable the computer analysis. I will change the screen so you can see the the graph at the bottom. I really like this, but uh, this is kept at 60 seconds. So even if you take five minutes, it will only show 60 seconds. And then we can see how fast I played that um, huge blunder at the end. So, uh, from the beginning, I will open the opening book. Again, the settings so you know, um, I'm using um, all the games that were played on leeches by players with an average rating of 2000 and above in a classical time control. That means 8 minutes or more. And here, uh, bishop to d6, bishop to d6 is the last move. It was only played 89 times and it gives white a great edge. In comparison to this 89 times, the top move, uh, knight to uh, c6, um, where you can go into the the Rui Lopez with um, the bishop to c5 or the Italian game with bishop to c4 or the scotch in which I like to play with um, d4, it is played over a hundred thousand times. Yet, he played bishop to d6, and now I think we can just forget the opening book. The numbers are um, too small, this is uh, not really representing much. Top move would be bishop c4, probably preparing something um, like this right away. Let's see how this um, would go. Yeah. Also preventing this idea of this kind of fried liver attack. Okay. But I played um, d4, attacking the pawn another time. It's only defended once. I thought he would maybe play out the queen to here, to e7. I didn't think he would want to push or just. Um, or just take my pawn and then I would be forced to take back which is actually the top move here but he attacked it with c4 and here I thought about pushing the pawn but as we just saw this pawn is now attacked twice and only defended once so it's kind of free so I took it Let's see what the computer... Ha Do I wanna... Yeah, why not? One line. And 
let's see that we get the settings right here. Yeah, we can we can keep the arrow. Okay. So what's the what's the engine suggesting? No, you know, let's go over the game with our brain first and um, double check it at the end with the with the engine. So I think um, it's best to take the pawn, but we can explore this variation. So on push, there's what I also what I didn't like is there's nothing forcing about this. If you um, go back and um, take the pawn, you are taking the bishop, and the bishop can take because on takes takes he's losing the bishop. So this is um, a forcing variation. Um, this would just drop the pawn. And this uh, wouldn't throw a punch at anything and he could just go on with his development. This square would be blocked and also this square for his knight and he would have problems bringing out the bishop. But I think he could work around that somehow. This pawn could never be attacked by another pawn, but he could just try to push f5 and undermine a structure so i don't see how this could be better than um, taking back to the game i took and he pushed back the bishop nothing special here now um i just try to go on with my development there are many pieces undeveloped um i would want to bring out the bishop first so i can castle quickly but I didn't know where I want to go with this bishop. So I just um, brought up knight. Because I was pretty sure I wanted the knight on this um, square. I didn't want to push the pawn right away. Even so, at the end I think it would have been, maybe it would, it would have even been better. So push and then bring the knight behind the pawn. Like you do in the d4 openings. Maybe that was something he was um, preparing also. Maybe that was uh, something he was preparing um, also. And then, yeah, there's nothing really attacked. He could um, give a check. But that could just be blocked with the bishop and um, attacked. Um, and I would be attacking the queen. And he would have to move the queen again. Probably bring it back here. And then, yeah. I got it. No, this pawn would be defended right now. I don't want to bring the bishop here because that was um, the square I prepared for my knight. Yeah, I could um, see going this um, variation also. I was um, debating this and I think this maybe even would have been better. I have an edge in this position and pushing the pawns. I'm taking some space and um, yeah, playing forcing chess would have been a good idea, I think. So I will keep in mind for the next game. But I played the more passive and um, con uh, and a con conventional move. He brought out his knight and then I brought out bishop. I yeah. I should have seen this idea, I think. He, he would have to prepare like he did. But I would have to retreat, so I don't think this was a good idea. It induced him to play h6. Yes, so, so in the end I think it was worth it. I spent a move, um, uh, I spent a move bringing out the knight and then brought it back. So I, it took me two moves and he had to insert this move. So no tempo were lost and he was weakening his king side which was a good thing there were like attacking motives when my knight was here sacrificing on h6 which is a common idea you have many pieces pointing in this direction yeah now he was preparing this and i i have to admit i didn't see it until the very last moment i was so close to plundering this bishop away I attack with the knight. I think this was a good idea. I, I like the knight on this um, square and it also led to me winning a minor piece, didn't it? I would like um, there being this material balance on the analysis board too. Is, is there a... 
no no there's no possibility to to show the material balance here no there's not down here move times no yeah another thing is i'm taking a long time for the moves sometimes so what i was saying if i retreated the bishop i wanted to keep this attack and this was probably not a good idea because i wouldn't have been able to attack on the f2 uh, f7 squares um anyhow at a later point because he already played uh, h6 but i was kind of yeah in in I, I was all lost in this idea and sometimes you know when you are all caught up in an idea you won't let it go and it nearly led to me playing a bishop to b3 and then with c4 he could have trapped my bishop there was not much i could do at best i could just um win a pawn and then what am i doing now yeah, i can try to win another pawn but maybe he can can he hold on to this with a move like this but then i could even attack take it yeah another time this is not really a threat because the queen is um protecting it and then he could just bring out the queen so probably i i would not be able to to get another pawn so i'm glad i saw this i really have to double check all the time not to drop any pieces or pawns like it happened later in the game where i dropped the rook so I I pulled my bishop back to e2 and then yeah this was the it was a bad idea I think No n not yet but he shouldn't have gone for this capture So um this was um I I think he overlooked that the queen was defending this and now his retreating square for the knight is uh, defended by by the pawn that just took over here, and he probably cannot do too much to. Now he should have played this move. Yeah. So I'm making another square for the knight, and if I play the move I played c3, he can retreat here. Uh, l let's see. I am up a pawn in this position with the cancelling method. Uh, I have three minor pieces and he has three. I have the bishop pair. And I'm up a pawn. Yeah, so he it would be better for him to play this move. And um, making a retreating square for the knight. But he missed that. And I could take his knight. Now the, the my knight is attacked once and defended once, and the problem is there is not much. Actually, let's say I go here, attacking the queen and attacking the bishop. He probably will have gone here. Yeah, that would that would maybe be better for me. So all the time I had to work around this like pin because my bishop on b2 was undefended. I don't want to play rook to b2 because it is so passive. This file is really blocked. There are three pawns on this file, but it's never gonna open up. This was the last file to open up, besides the king positions. So I didn't want to play my rook here just to defend the po uh, the bishop and I had to defend it in another way. Um here I brought the rook over he he wasn't castled yet and he was um, still a move away from being castled. And there were maybe ideas of a discovery check if say I um I somehow moved the Rook and uh, the knight away. But he saw that. 
<clears throat> excuse me, he attacked my my knight a second time. So he had different ideas to to protect the the knight. And one idea is to bring up the queen, and it would be um, now defended uh, twice. The like X-ray defense of the bishop and the defense of the queen. In general, this isn't the best idea. You don't want to have the more valuable piece in the front and the less valuable piece behind. But in this uh, specific position, it wasn't a a, a problem because um, the other piece was his uh, queen also. So if he would take and I would take and take back and take back, we both would have lost our queen. He, he would have traded his queen for my queen. But in general, um, if there is, um, say, a knight um, on d7 attacking my knight and he would have um, traded the, um, two minor pieces, this, this would have been possible to defend the knight like this. But what I did... is I played bishop to f3 and therefore um, discovering a defense it seems like discovered defense um, of the knight and this also has um, the idea of bringing me one step closer to unleashing a discovered attack on his king so if he would let's say um, play the rook over to attack my pawn again which is defended twice and then would be attacked twice, then I could um, move. I, I could even attack his queen. And with a knight to c4, it's check and it's an attack on the queen. And he probably would have to play a queen to e7 and trading the queen for, for my rook. And then I could just bring back my knight somewhere. But he didn't fall for this. He blocked the potential discovery and prepared to get castled. I don't think if this was was a good idea. I I, I don't know. We've got to take a look at that with the with the engine. And then some trade happened, and I didn't like how this was going down now. I I had very good attacking chances over here. I was thinking about things like this, but it didn't work out yet. If my queen was over here on e3, I could have... No, I couldn't, because the queen was defending laterally. So this wasn't working yet. But instead, I wasn't afraid of him taking over here because I could just take back with the queen. And I wanted to prepare this uh, rook lift. Now he's um, attacking this pawn again. Yeah, and what I didn't see is I saw if he take, I take back with the queen and I'm still defending this pawn. But he is indeed removing a defender because now in this position my pawn is defended twice. And if he takes my bishop and I take back, it's only defended once. So what I should have done instead of because this is an isolated pawn. It's it's a weakness. You, you could see it as a weakness or, or you could see it as a strength. Um, I think in this position, if I can defend it and if it marches, it's a great strength. So what I should have done is, I think, played rook e to d1. Just postponing this, uh, this rook lift for another move and um, giving another defender to my isolated pawn over here. We'll see what the computer says in this position. 
Yeah, instead I kind of dropped the pawn. Now he is removing the defender, and now this is only defended once. I didn't see a good way here to to go on with with the sacrifice I was dreaming on in the game. But this is this is another good example. Yeah, it's it's like when when the bishop was on on c4 and I was um, thinking about retreating it to b3 because I wanted to keep the attack on f7. Um, sometimes you just get caught up in an idea, and uh, if I would um, go for this idea, takes takes, and then I have my um, rook over here, but there is no check. Or maybe in this position. So, so what I was thinking is here. I, I am. Pre I have huge threats. His king position is open, but he could just trade and then bring the rook over. And uh, so there, there goes my attack. Maybe I'm. St I think I'm still the better side in this position. Now that I look at this, I can take his pawn over here. And what's he doing? Yeah, he he's threatening this pawn. I can just bring up my king. Yeah, he has three pawns. I have five pawns. He has these double pawns over here. I have these double pawns. I think I'm still better, but I didn't like all the simplifications. Even though I was down on time greatly, I think at his position. But I just kind of didn't like it. <clears throat> but what I didn't see is in this position. Let's say um, bishop, uh, uh, rook, uh, knight takes, um, pawn takes, and then instead of rook takes, queen to g3 or g4. What would be better, g3 or g4? Yeah. Let's go with the safer square here. Here she's protected. And then he cannot um, play bishop to h8 because um, that would be made. So this was what I didn't see in, in the game. I didn't see the idea of giving a check like, like a Zwischenzug. It's a German word, Zwischenzug, and it means like in between move. So you are making a move in between and giving a check so your your opponent has to respond before he can um, go through, follow through with his plan. So um, this would be a Zwischenzug because um, he's now in check and he has to move his king or block the check. So he cannot move the king and he could block the check with the queen. What would I do then? I can't move this rook because um, then I would be mated. Um, this is uh, what you call back rank mate. Let's say I just some line. I go here to take this and threaten mate. And then he goes um, rook d1. And all of a sudden I made it. Because uh, my queen's uh, my king's on the back rank, and um, the back rank is attacked, and I haven't made a pawn move yet to to give a improving square to my king. So I think yeah, he would have to block with this um, queen, and then. Is there a good follow-up? I don't see one. I would have to trade queens anyways. And I can't bring out the rook. Another idea is to take this pawn. Maybe this wasn't too bad. And then, then I have the square over here. My king is pretty safe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, let, let, let's check with the engine. So instead, I took the queen and he took back with the with the rook. I took the pawn. 
he doubled up. And yeah, here I saw the threat. Let's say I'm, I'm making another move. Maybe um, bringing a rook to the seventh or attacking another pawn. Just, let's say just, yeah, or attacking the pawn. And then if he um, attacks my rook, what do I do? Yeah. I, I'm back to this um, back rank problem. If takes, takes, I made it. So in this position, I decided not to attack the pawn, but to um, make some air for my king to prevent getting back rank checkmated. So here was when I played very fast. I I was wide, and you see, I played pretty fast. I was very much down on time. I like taking some time in the opening and in the middle game uh, to get a good end game. And the end game is sometimes um, easier to handle because there are less pieces on the board. But uh, yeah, you have to double check. You still have to use your time. And that is something I definitely have to take away from this game. So I attack the rook. He attacked my um, my knight. I didn't see. I, I I didn't even see he was threatening the pawn over here. But what, what should I do? Attack the rook, and then my rook is um, undefendable. Just drop the rook. Yeah, nothing good in this position. I I cannot move the knight. It's pinned. So I defended it with the king, and he could take the pawn over here. Uh, I could have played rook to a1, but that is a a move I really don't like. This rook is doing nothing over here, just defending his pawn, and he he can do everything. Bring the rook over. Yeah. How do I defend this pawn now? Bring the bring this rook back. And then this pawn is hanging again. Move the move the knight. I don't know. Yeah. I think there was. Yeah, we have to ask the engine. But that wasn't yeah, wasn't so much I see now. So here I defended the rook and unpinned my knight. Attacking the rook, he's trading. So I kind of like this. Um, each side has one rook. Um, he has uh, one pawn more than me, but it's it's doubled and it's blocked by my pawn. And I I am up a knight. I couldn't uh, take his um, pawns. So he he was faster here, and then I tried to to hunt this pawn down. The idea was good. I'm cutting him off on the seventh, but the problem was I took the king. Yeah, here he's taking my other pawns, and when this pawn falls, this is bound to fall sooner or later too. And then I saw this this idea pref uh, protecting the pawn over here with a um, check. He has to move. He's cut off. Yeah. Now this pawn is um, defended. But in this position, I just I cannot take with the king. I should have taken with the rook. So now he's not cut off on the 7th, but what happened in the game was much worse than him not being cut off, and it was me losing the rook. So he skewered my rook with check, and I, I couldn't do anything at this point. 
and then I was just hoping to fork him someday. I eliminated his last pawn, so he couldn't make another queen. And then I think I did a good job in not getting made it. I don't know, is this a theoretical draw or is it a win for black? I gotta look into that maybe. Guys, if you're still watching, please let me know. What uh, would you like to see um, in kind um, respect of uh, future videos? I, I'm really a fan of opening theory. I'm not very good of, at openings, but I, I really like to um, inspect the openings and see what kind of positions you get. And I could see me doing some uh, videos on openings. Um, also, what I um, like is uh, endgame positions, so endgame theory. We could um, set up a position and I could um, just go over it and see um, how you can hold the position if it's a draw or how you can win um, for the winning um, side. So if you're still watching, please let me know what kind of uh, future videos you would like to see. Um, also, I'm thinking about making some Blitz videos for those of you who don't want to watch for 45 minutes. How, how long is the video going at the moment? Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty long, I'm sure. So let's skip over this part pretty fast. There wasn't much going on. Here, I'm attacking the rook. He didn't see it. And now I could have taken it. It, I'm pretty sure it's not possible to mate with um, king and knight versus lone king. But uh, it would have um, brought the draw a little earlier. Well, but I didn't see it. So don't play too fast. Yeah, and then we agreed to a draw. Where was the big blunder I made? Here. How long did I take for this move? I'm white, of course. King takes b3, 5 seconds. Yeah, and the increment is 10 seconds. So this is... This is very bad. Yeah, I I got to take my time and not throw my my advantage away. I think I have a winning position. Yeah, so so let's start the computer analysis now. We'll go back to the beginning and add the stockfish engine and just see what's going on. It's taking some time. So let me um, say this. I'm playing on leeches most of the time. I really like um, the side leeches. Um, I have an account on um, chess.com also. If you want to play me, I really would like to play you the viewers and want to interact with you guys. So if you want to play me, um, just let me know. Um, post a comment down below or add me on one of these um, sites if you play on leeches that's great we have um, a great analysis feature here everything is free you can make an account for free if you um, play on chess.com that's not a problem either um, i have linked all my um, accounts on the on the youtube page so you can find me everywhere just shoot me a message and i would be very happy to play with you Oh, that's gonna be interesting. I was white, that's good. I had a great advantage, but oh. What you can tell by now is that uh, this game is much less accurate um, than the last game, but my opponent didn't pose me uh, much difficult questions. He he made no um, no moves that that really 
um, put me in a position where I had to make different, uh, difficult uh, decisions. Yeah, here the uh, engine is saying this is an in inaccuracy. And it's even recommending D4 in this position or C3. Yeah, these are C3 is uh, preparing D4. So you can take back with the with the um, pawn. Yeah, now it's saying take it, but uh, he didn't. We've also seen this uh, already. Yeah, and th um, bishop to uh, f4. That, that was a move I was uh, thinking about in the game. I think I uh, I voiced the my thoughts at that point, but then I preferred the idea of bringing the bishop over here to have it on the long diagonal. No, not this one. This one. Yeah, but I think this this would have been a good idea. Bring the bishop to f4. h6 was a blunder. Why was it a blunder? Castling was also a blunder. I see. Bring out the queen. And what can he do? Yeah, there is this attack. I was on the game. I was thinking about this. I I nearly blundered my bishop, but I didn't see him building up the battery of the bishop and the queen. So, what's he doing now? Is this uh, leading to mate somehow? Fish wants to keep moving with the king. What is wrong with just ah? You can't take because this is pinned. And with the queen, I see you're losing the queen. Yeah. And this is already made a nine. All right. That is a very nice idea. Queen to d5 and the battery. I got to I got to keep that in mind. That would have made it a little easier, I think. But instead I cancel it. And still this idea is present in the position. I could have still gone in for this um, queen to d5 idea. But then I plucked the square of my knight and there, there it goes, it's gone. Yeah, that was the right move I played. I'm, I'm kind of glad I found it. I mean, it's, it's not rocket sized science to find this move, but I was really, I was close to playing bishop to b3. Here, Stockfish says um, to bring out the bishop to c uh, to e3. But this wasn't too bad either. And this is a a mistake. It's just dropping a minor piece. Another mistake. Yeah, d6. Knight takes was an inaccuracy. Better was bishop takes. Why is bishop takes better? Ah. Uh, I see there is um the g7 pawn and the bishop isn't on the 
on his home square. So he's not defending this um, this pawn. This pawn is only defended by the bishop in the starting position. So if the bishop moves, this is a target naturally. So I I was only thinking about my knight in the center of the board, just being a beast, taking all these squares in the black position. But this would actually my knight is threatening nothing here. Yeah. So if I play um, knight takes. Knight is um, very nice on the squares, he's attacking many squares, but he is not threatening anything. Instead, bishop takes, threatens to take the pawn. So, if um, we follow the stockfish line, takes, takes, yeah, and then here we have the idea, again with the, with the discovery, And then you're already in... Oh, nice. Look at the sacrifice here. You could take back. But I would drop the queen. Very nice idea. I wonder if this was present at a later point when we reached a similar position in the game. This is very nice. So you're um, moving away one piece that is um, on the e-file with check and black has to respond. And here it says the best thing is to just move the king. And then you, you just picked up the pawn over here and black loses their castling rights. This is very nice. Gotta keep that in mind too. Instead, I took with the I took with the knight. Here it says I should um, push the pawn. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the knight has no moves in this position. And you cannot really attack this pawn. If you take, you are just helping white. And then you just go on attacking the rook. Black's still on castle, so castling is a good idea in general. And then they play queen d6. I kind of like this move. Uh, no, L let's go back one first. So, in this position, I took with the... I took with the knight, where I should have taken with the bishop, and um, then they played the. They attacked the knight with the bishop and pinned it. I kind of liked the idea. I think this this was good. What Black did here. And then I brought the rook to the um, to the same file to the king file. And um, queen to d6 was an inaccuracy. Bishop f3 is okay. Another idea here would be um, queen to d4. Yeah, I was point pointing out this in the analysis before. Probably better.
because here I dropped the pawn. This was a mistake. Yeah. Best move was knight takes f7. Knight takes a, a f7. King takes. Uh, invading with the rook. I gotta move the queen. Dogfish is uh, suggesting this. Yeah, you're launching a good attack here. Attacking the queen another time. But let's be real, you gotta see these moves. A move like this, a retreating move. Sure, it um, throws a punch at the queen. And then what do you do? Okay. So, in this position it would have been better to sacrifice the knight. But of course, this is very bad, but I'm blocking my queen. I shouldn't have played this move. But he didn't see it. He, he didn't go in for this. Oh. So good he didn't. Stockfish says it's uh, plus 17 for white. Ah, uh, because, yeah. Because I have the... He, he cannot take with the queen, because I take back with the bishop. And if he takes um, the pawn of the knight, so this pawn is still defended indirectly, then he's losing his queen. Okay, so I didn't see this. Okay, this is this is good to know. Now, there are two pieces in between my rook and the king, and if he takes with one, then I will use the other one to attack his queen. He castled, probably good. Knight g4, another mistake I made. Yeah, I I kind of thought that this was not good, but I didn't see what, what would be better. Rook c1 right away. Yeah, probably. Why bring the knight um, to the side of the board? Not a good, not a good idea. It's good where it is. Everything's fine here. Now I should bring back the knight over here. Yeah, this is actually is a good idea. Defending this um, this bishop. And I can keep my queen here. Rook A to C1, A in accuracy. And this was a blunder. <laughs> I really liked the move when I played it. Oh, I could have even just taken it. Because this pawn is pinned, my queen's undefended here. Oh no, I did not see this. So takes, takes, and he just got the rook for free. That, that was a huge blunder. But he did not see. He, he did not see it. Very fortunate for me. But then he went in for this. Oh, we wanted to invest these, um, these things. So Stockfish is saying I have to trade here. But let's see, is there anything with this idea? With the sacrifice on h6 plus 1. So, dropping by 3 points. This is not good. Okay, I can go in for this now. 
but I still sacrificed a piece for two pawns. No. Good I didn't uh, go in for the sacrifice. Instead I took, which was incorrect. Yeah, I should bring back the knight right away. Oh no, this is okay too. And now this is um, the simple position where I rushed. Let's see if anything great was missed. Despite my blunder. Any huge changes in the position. This wasn't a good idea. Should have brought my rook to the seventh right away. Okay. Everything's fine. It would have been better to do this right away, but I wanted to to attack this pawn. I kind of had the idea to maybe protect the queening square with the knight, or to trade my knight for the pawn. Here's where I, where I throw the game, yeah, where I threw the game away. You can see the, all my advantage is gone in one move. And this time he saw it. And I, I made another blunder. Just wait for it. W what did I do now? <laughs> really? But neither uh, I nor him did see this. Oh my god. Yeah. And nothing special here. This is a draw. It says stockfish. There's this one point. I'm sure this is here where he kind of made a mistake and didn't see that I was attacking his Rook. But this wouldn't have changed anything. And then we agreed to a talk. So, uh, some mistakes and some blunders were made by both of us. Uh, I think the game was uh, very uh, well anyways. So we both had an average loss of 75 centipawns. I made five blunders and the opponent made four blunders. So not too bad the game. And I think there was some things I could take away from this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. Uh, or you can um, leave a comment down below. I would really appreciate any comments and would like to um, hear what you guys have to say. Also, please let me know if you have any wishes for future videos that I make. Um, as I said before, um, we could um, make more like standard chess videos in, a, in this longer time control. 15 plus 10 is what I like to play. And we could go in for some Blitz videos. Or we could um, have a look at some endgame positions. Or if you have some openings um, that you like to have discussed, we could even go and have a look at them. So just let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.